Hey guys, this is Dan with Gears and Gadgets. Thanks for tuning in. I am heading over to Los Angeles. I am going to LA to meet up with Matt Laidlaw. The reason why I'm doing this is I thought it would be interesting to get the perspective of, well, Matt Laidlaw, who has 110,000 plus subscribers and his name is also on a Harley Davidson dealership. I find it really interesting. What is the value of YouTubers for, say, the dealership? Uh, especially kind of on the heels of some recent news uh, that's kind of hit the community. So, five and a half hours, Matt Laidlaw, here I come. Sitting here with Matt Laidlaw. I finally made it here from Phoenix, a five and a half hour trip. And I came here just to talk to Matt and see, uh, you know, what he thinks about his relationship with YouTube and YouTubers and the value that it brings to his dealership here. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for stopping by, Dan. Uh, fan of the channel, by the way. Yeah, we, we talked quite a bit already about, you know, YouTube and, um, you know, be, being a dealership and also, you know, uh, being a YouTuber and for us, it's been it's been pretty huge. the The amount of people we get coming in that say that they've watched the the videos and um, appreciate the information that we've given on the videos and uh, the inspiration that they've gained for maybe watching some of our rides and stuff like that is it, pretty cool. So, yeah, it's it's been one of those things that we're never going to go back on. It's now kind of part of uh, what I do on on the daily and and part of. Uh, my job title, if you want to call it that. So it's been good. I find it a fascinating medium uh, for uh, YouTubers uh, in general to have access. And uh, I know we talked about this previously is, uh, you know, a big part of me is just getting access to to a dealership for content creation and the value that it might bring to a dealership. Like, What would your expectations be? I come in here with my GoPro uh, recording videos that I intend on putting out on YouTube. You know, what would your expectations be of, of me as a YouTuber in this space? Well, I mean, I think it's going to be a give and take relationship, just like anything. So if you come in and I'm giving you access to bikes and things like that, um, then I'm, I'm going to want you to represent the dealership and the business in a positive light. Because after all, um, what you're basically telling me is, hey, I want to help you promote the business in exchange for getting on maybe a test ride of a certain model. So I, I think a lot of a lot of common sense comes into play. You know, it's like, you know, show me, show me some of your content, show me what you're going to do, show me how you're going to promote uh, the brand, show me how you're going to promote specifically our dealership. And I think if you're have any type of business savvy at all, or branding savvy at all, then you're going to be able to shine a good light on the product. You know, you're going to be able to shine a good light on the bikes. And, um, and I mean, you own a bike. Um, and so obviously the, if, if someone's coming into the dealership and wanting to uh, ride a bike and maybe they're a content creator. I'm going to want to see that, Hey, this person is knowledgeable about Harley Davidson. So you got to have a certain level of credibility before you even you know, walk through the door. So, and, and Dan, you and I had a conversation before kind of about, you know, how maybe YouTubers or content creators, how they are, how they can go about making content, uh, Harley Davidson based and, um, kind of the best way to go about doing that. And, one of the things I said to you was it's, it's really about relationships. You know, if you can cultivate a relationship with a dealership, maybe you bought your bike there, maybe you, you do your service work there, um, or maybe you don't and you're just, you know, good friends with um, the dealership employees or whatever. Um, it's, it's about building a, a level of trust there. You know, if someone trusts you, they've seen your work. Uh, obviously, if you have an established YouTube channel, they can go to reference your past videos and see, hey, this guy's production quality is good. Uh, this guy's level-minded. He speaks in a professional manner. He's not a loose cannon that's going to say something weird all of a sudden and, you know, em embarrass the image uh, of our dealership and himself. Uh, if you have all those things about you, then, you know, there's, I think there's a high chance that, you know, dealerships are going to want to at least do some type of collaboration with you. And that all makes sense. And to my viewers, they would probably wonder, well, you know, you rode five and a half hours to come and talk to Matt Laidlaw. There's a half a dozen dealerships in Phoenix in your you know local area, you could have went and picked the brain of anybody else. But uh, for me, it's coming in town here to somebody who's not only a, a dealer, but also has a, an amazing YouTube channel uh, with the content that, you know, you have the context from, from both angles. So uh, Thanks, you kind of have all the bases covered. You know, I think, I think you and I kind of talked too about, um, you know, the struggle that sometimes YouTubers have in, you know, getting on the bikes, 
and you know maybe reviewing models and I, I can definitely respect someone who isn't you know an employee of Harley Davidson or someone that works at Harley Davidson dealership because now you're you're now eliminating you know the bias that that can come into play, um, which you know for me. Yes, I try to say the pros and cons of all the bikes, but it's impossible for me to ever eliminate all the bias. Of course, I'm going to, you know, tell you to buy a Harley Davidson because that's my job. I sell Harley Davidsons, but at the same time, my my content is kind of uh, circled around. Or what 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 guides me is more okay. Who who is this bike best for, and who is this bike not good for, and thing and things like that, and kind of that narrative. And obviously, I'm going to talk about the good. Um, obviously I talk about sometimes the weaknesses of bikes as well, but someone like yourself or someone that you know, doesn't even work in the field of Harley Davidson. Now you're, you're, you're a little bit more credible source to someone who's thinking about buying a Harley because now you have absolutely no constraints as to what you're going to say, good or bad. And so I think, you know, the whole influencer world that a lot of industries are picking up and using more and more is, is an important one. And that's the kind of content that millennials and, and the younger generation want to see. They want to see someone, a real person that's not financially incentivized to talk about the product. And so uh, if you can, if dealerships, you know, make the right relationships with local writers that create content, I, I think it's, it's huge. And right now I don't think enough dealerships are really taking advantage of that. I think for a number of reasons, one, they've not, they've never done it in the past. And sometimes it's, it's hard to teach old dogs, new tricks, but um, if I wasn't a content creator, um, I would definitely get involved with local guys. And I actually do, even though I do create content and I have a YouTube channel, I still will like, for example, you're here right now. So yeah. Um, yeah, I would, I would do it. I would take time out of my day. I would lend, um, you know, our facility or bikes or whatever to create that content. Cause guess what? You're going to, you're going to create that content. And, and if you ever want to come back again, then you know you're going to have to put some type of a, a positive sw swing or spin on things, even though you may not love the, uh, you know, street glide or whatever, you can say a bad thing, but at the end of the day, if it's uh, constructive criticism and you um, put the dealership in a good light, you're coming back and you're doing more. Yeah, and I think the, 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 the word grandstanding comes up uh, in my mind of, as a YouTuber coming into a facility, uh, Hey, can, you know, it's not my motorcycle. It's not my dealership. It's not my brand. And for me to come in and, and, uh, hop on something, let's say, uh, you know, you send me out on a CVO and I, I come out with a video just bashing the entire bike, whether or not it's genuine or not, isn't even as much the, the issue as it is, uh, why are you grandstanding on my, you know, I I'm supporting you in doing this and you're kind of like just jumping all over that and like, you know, trampling on it. So it's if, that if level I can of respect. Yeah. If I can interrupt you for one second, a lot of people, um, I did a video back on the Indian challenger where I just roasted the heck out of it. A lot of people, you know, hate that video. Either you, either you love it or hate it. Let's be honest. Uh, but a lot of people say like, well, Matt, why don't you get on the challenger and actually ride it? I would never go to a dealership and say, Hey guys, let me borrow your challenger so I can rip on your bike. You know, and honestly, I would probably say good things as well. But, um, if I ever take one on trade, I'm going to do it, but I would never go to a dealership and disrespect <laughs> them by going in and then publicly, you know, talking about their product. Um, it's different when I sit there on, on the web, but I'm not taking someone's time by going into the dealership and using somebody else's property to then dissuade people to buy that product. So uh, you, you don't want to grandstand on somebody else's support. And, um, right. you know, that's where, uh, that's why coming out here talking to Matt, um, is, is important to me because again, the context is there, um, from somebody who gets it from kind of all angles here. Yeah. One thing I find interesting and, and, you know, we talked about this also is watching a YouTube video. So this is just Dan and Matt talking and there's this, this perception of, um, of bias. And I always tell people, I get comments on my videos about Matt Laidlaw and they're like, well, he's just biased. And he's, you know, I, I see it. And it's like, well, yes, but he, he also will tell you that he's biased. I've watched in several of your videos where you're like, Hey, look, obviously, you know, I, you acknowledge your bias. Yeah. Um, you've mentioned frustration about, you know, it, it's, it's, it's hard to, uh, create that content knowing you're being a hundred percent genuine 
to then just have it be like received as bias Harley de- 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 Davidson dealership uh, to be dismissed immediately. Like how, how difficult is that to deal with on a daily basis? <laughs> it's funny, you know, no one's ever actually asked me about that and that's actually pretty insightful. You even, you know, put yourself in my shoes for a second. Um, and um, you know what? I think I've gotten used to it. At first, yes, there w- there was something, there was a lot of that going on where I would genuinely give people my opinion about the bike, the pros and the cons, and people are just going to dismiss it. But at the end of the day, you know what? I think there are a lot of people that still can tell that, hey, I'm being as genuine, just straight up about, you know, the things I'm saying as possible. And um, there's going to be a lot of people that always just think that, yeah, you know, here's Matt, you know, the salesman. And um, <laughs> that's totally cool. You know what? I would probably think the same way, you know, as some people. So really what, what my intention is to be 100% transparent. Everybody knows who I am. Everybody knows where I work. And take it for what it is. Take it for the source. I'm here to educate. I'm here to tell you if, if you know. And I tell this people, to a lot of people, if you know you want a Harley Davidson, And it's just what bike within the Harley Davidson world, or you already own a Harley Davidson and you want to know different ways to outfit it or, uh, you know, tips and tricks about, you know, oils or batteries or, uh, accessorization. I'm a great channel to watch. If you're trying to look at something, uh, from an objective point of view on whether you should buy a Honda Goldwing, an ultra limited or a, uh, a chieftain, Probably not the best channel to watch, you know, maybe tune into gears and gadgets for something like that. But, um, yeah, so you know what, take it for what it is. Take, take me for what I am. And, um, it's nice that I have access to a lot of things in the Harley world that most people don't have access to. And so, um, from that point of view, you're watching a guy that can show you those things that a lot of other people can't show you and talk about things in a way that most people can't talk to you because they haven't lived, slept and breath breathed it their entire life. And so there's, there's our pros and cons to watching everybody, I think. Yeah. And, and the reason why I even asked that question, and it kind of goes back to your, your challenger video. Uh, and, and we put videos out around the same time on that, that platform. And you actually, uh, you actually gave me some of the footage it, actually. Right, right, right. And so, so people, Dan's half the reason <laughs> I did that video. So if you don't like that video, he gave me the footage. Good. Okay? Maybe, maybe they'll come back to you and yell at you now about me. But that, that was kind of my point was I had people that came onto my, my channel and that, that is, is a phenomenon in and of itself that I've, I have yet to totally understand how this even works. But people watched that video where you came out from basically the, the outside of that video and said, this is, I understand the comedy of what it is that I'm about to do here. And this like 100% ownership of the bias and people still left that video to go and find me, which again, I had a video out on the same uh, topic. So people probably were served that video or whatever the case may well, be. I mentioned you in the video as well. I think. Yeah. It, yeah. And, and you did. And, and, and people came over to me and they're like, I, I unsubscribed from Matt. I can't. And it's, <laughs> and it's, it just blows my mind that, uh, that that's even like a mindset. Cause I watch YouTube videos. I'm sure you watch YouTube videos oh, yeah. and the fact that you could be triggered <laughs> that much, uh, you know, again, it just comes off as, um, that's, me is, is, is just being independent. Me understanding how infuriating that has to be to be like, I owned the bias and people are still crushing me for it. You know, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's, yeah. I'd say it's funny, but I'm sure it's not on that side of the table. Well, it's funny too, <laughs> because I think everybody wanted to kind of create their own narrative. Like everyone was like, well, Matt's just really scared about the challenger and he feels threatened about the challenger. <laughs> and, um, you know, I think I mentioned in the video too that, you know, we don't really have very many people, at least our dealership in Southern California, shopping us against a challenger. At least not the way they, they come in and they openly say, hey, Matt, you know, I'm looking at the Rogue Glide, but I'm also kind of thinking about the challenger. Um, I, I think I can count on one hand the number of times people have actually come in and said, hey, I'm looking at this. I'm also kind of looking at the Indian, and then they end up buying the Indian. I'm not saying that to be cocky and like, oh, Harley's so much better. They sell way more than any. I'm not saying it in that way. I'm just saying it legitimately. I didn't make that video because I felt like Indian was going to come in and capture a bunch of Harley Davidson's business. You know, maybe in other states, it's a little bit more competitive. But in our neck of the woods, you know, I know of like one dealer in Southern California and there's like, you know, 30, we were naming them earlier, like 30, 35 right. Harley dealerships. And, you know, maybe it's just kind of, 
you know, the, the product density is, is, you know, more Harley here. I don't know why, but anyways, I'm rambling now. So, okay. So I've been following uh, pretty closely here over the last, I don't know, month or so. Uh, are you familiar with million dollar Bogan? Yeah, I've seen his stuff. Okay. So I'm not sure how much of the controversy you've seen or haven't seen, but there was some, some issues that, uh, apparently he, you know, maybe made some, some comments that, um, I don't totally know the context, but that, uh, maybe he had said some things and, and Harley maybe took an objection to it. But again, I'm coming from this, not really knowing all the details of, of what happened with that. I don't know if you know anything else or, you know, I, I, I was in Tennessee. I remember seeing his video about something about him quitting YouTube and, um, by the way, I, I think he's a funny guy. I enjoy his content. You know, some of his videos where he rode the, the Iron 8883 up to like the Himalayas or whatever um, was like, wow, who is this guy? And <laughs> is he really riding these distances in the cold on a Sportster? And I watched some of, some of his uh, Australia videos as well, where he's going around on his Road King stuff. And so, yeah, funny guy. I think, um, yeah, he makes some good content and stuff. But um, yeah, I, I saw his video. I don't think I watched the whole thing. I saw it when I was eating dinner or something like that, how he was. Um, yeah, gonna gonna quit or go on break for a little bit, and I don't really know the details. Um, it just sounds, it just according to his video, it sounds like he said something in a video, and either the dealership or somebody asked him to take it down or something like that. So I'm not kind of unclear what what happened, but yeah, I, I, and it's all it's it's certainly something that's left to the imagination because we don't really nobody knows the details uh, except for the people that were directly involved, which uh, neither one of us would have any access to, to really talking to, to, to glean anymore. But uh, from that's the way that I understand it was that there was um, again, talking about, uh, and I made reference to grandstanding and coming into the dealership and, and um, you know, using the uh, ability to, to have access and then maybe saying something that um, potentially could have uh, uh, negative impacts to the brand. And that, you know, how I personally probably want to do that, but um I, I guess just the question comes up of uh, that relationship between YouTuber, you know, you and I, um, and then also when you start getting involved with larger brands and, and like, you know, I know you don't know the one-to-one -one, uh, communication that happened in that situation, but um, it's interesting definitely to get your input on, on that uh, situation. Yeah. Um, again, I think it kind of boils down to, you know, reading between the lines again, I don't know exactly what happened, but I think it kind of boils down to, um, you know, brands, it, it's, it's big money and, you know, brands have certain values and they don't want those values to be misconstrued in a way to then drive away customers. And, you know, when you, when you go into a Harley dealership, you know, we'll talk specifically about Harley. Um, I mean, the Harley dealerships represent Harley Davidson. Um, they're, they are like the forward facing, um, you know, brick and mortar stores of the brand. And so, um, if you're saying things that aren't in line with the dealership or the motor company's, you know, values, then obviously they're not going to want that stuff out there in the air, especially if it, if it shines a bad light on, cause I mean, let's face it, you know, Har Harley, I think already is kind of in an uphill battle against the perceived, uh, stereotypes, you know, rough, tough. Again, I don't know what was said, but you know what, at the end of the day, if you, if you say things that are, uh, and I know, I think he said it was a joke, which of course it was a joke. You know, I joke all the time too. And you know, sometimes we say things that we don't uh, really mean uh, to be to be negative, which I'm sure he never meant anything he said to be some type of attack on any person or, or whatever. Um, but at the same time, it's kind of like you have, a, you have a platform, you're kind of representing the brand a little bit when you're inside a dealership and you're riding the bikes and things like that. So, um, yeah, again, I don't know if it was the dealer or the motor company or whoever said, you know, take it down or stop to cut it out or whatever, but I think that's perfectly fine. Quite frankly, you know, I, I, it's, it's, I guess you can't really force anybody to do anything at the end of the day. I mean, he's not a dealership employee, but, you know, they probably asked him nicely and said, hey, you know, it's, it's not the best thing that we want, you know, at our dealership being said. Well, and, and I think another thing to keep in perspective here is is that it's not the one-to-one -one uh, 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 whether even if it wasn't Harley Davidson, but in this scenario, I think sometimes people, including myself can be guilty of, uh, seeing a piece of content and, uh, assuming that it's kind of a one-to-one -one relationship. And what we were talking about earlier is, is the access. So if, if I come in here with my, my GoPro and I, and I want to talk about Harley Davidson as a brand, you're providing me with that access, but you're also doing it with, uh, an assumption of, 
my content's going to be in line with with what it is that that my values your and values want, yeah, yeah. And, and that i'm not doing anything to harm you because if i right. You know, truly as a friend, wouldn't want to to put you in a bad position with the brand. And even if I do or say something uh, that uh, maybe makes it through my editing process that didn't uh, get uh, get cut through the checks of my personal checks and just makes it out on YouTube, that if the phone were to ring and say, "Hey, you know, this is something that um, is not making me look good," that I personally, this is just me personally, would say, "Oh, sorry, Matt, I." Whoops, <laughs> you know, because I mean, we, we do, we joke, we say things and uh, sometimes our own personal uh, editing system doesn't realize that maybe it's not okay and, and, you know, we can get people in hot water. So I think it just comes down to being, um, in, in my opinion, if you're getting access, you're kind of also indirectly kind of signing up with that, uh, that relationship. Uh, A little bit. And it's just kind of use some street smarts too. Like let's yeah. take you and I, for example, if you were to come in here and say, Hey Matt, I want to ride the live wire around and do like a video review on it. Cool. Dan, come on down. Um, if you, if you then go back home and, you know, shed a bad negative light on the dealership and, um, I don't feel like you make a, you know, a really good representation of the product, you know, does that mean saying everything's all great about the bike? No. But if I don't, if I hate, if I absolutely hate the content you put out there, guess what? You never come back here again. So it's in your best interest too, just from street smarts um, right. to, you know, be positive about the experience and the dealership that you're now collaborating with. I mean, it's a, it's really at that point, it's a little bit of a, a business, you know, unofficial business relationship. There, there's that. And then there's also the, the fact that as an independent creator myself, uh, coming into, you know, these four walls and creating content is different than me going back to my studio at my house and creating content within those four walls. And I think that's also kind of an important part of the discussion is that uh, being in that, uh, given the access to create in that environment uh, is not just a, a blank check, basically, to make it your playground. Like you said, to if I go out and create a video talking about everything negative about the live wire on Laidlaw's name, you're going to be like, dude, what are you doing? Right. You know, and, and I think that that should be expected and not something that, uh, the people who are viewing that content will be like, I can't believe Laidlaw came down on him for that. And, you know, it should be something that like, well, of course he came down on him for it. You know, he gave right. him the product to, to do that. So. Right. And at the same time too, I mean, if you genuinely didn't like the bike and said, Hey, it's not for me for X, Y, Z, like maybe, maybe it was a road glide. Right. Hey, you know what? This bike was, um, it just didn't really fit my riding needs. The heritage is, is a bike that's more in line for me and then, and, and had, um, you know, solid evidence as to why that wasn't the case or why you didn't like it. Cool. Awesome. Great. But, um, yeah, it's just being able to differentiate between the two. Yeah. I think it's just kind of a, a, a smart, savvy skill that people need to have when they're an influencer. And by the way, I will say and go on record that when I bought my heritage, I watched the laid law video on the heritage and you said, if you're uh, something along the lines of, if you're a bigger boy, six, one, you know, two something or so, whatever the, whatever the threshold was, you're going to want to go with the road King. I did not go with the road King <laughs> and it was the right choice for me. Hey, but. there you go. I'm not, I'm not always <laughs> right folks. You know, but, all, I, all I can do is give my criteria and, and, um, you know, give you kind of the best, you know, kind of gauge. Cause let, let's be honest, you know, there's no perfect bike for anyone. Understood. Certain. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Anyways. I, I, I always, I, I've mentioned that in several videos that, that Mike Laidlaw said this was the wrong bike, but you know, again, for me, <laughs> daily commuter, uh, you know, crushing around in, in Phoenix, I'm not, you know, doing a lot of touring and stuff. So I am a know. heritage fan, by the way, though. <laughs> Are uh, you? Yeah. Yeah. It's a good, it's a good bike. It is. So. But all right, I appreciate the yeah. the, the back and forth. Definitely, it was a, a great conversation. Right on, man. Awesome. Thanks. Yep.